Thank you. Growing up, I learned an important lesson from G.I. Joe. <laughs> knowing is half the battle. In medicine, knowing is diagnosis. We use diagnostic tests to know if we have a disease. I want to tell you about our work to create a rapid diagnostic test for sickle cell disease. And in sickle cell disease, knowing can be more than half the battle. Some of you may be familiar with this disease. It's also called sickle cell anemia. It's a genetic disorder that causes red blood cells to deform, and they create a sickle shape. These sickle cells can cause pain, increase the risk for infection, and can cause stroke. In the US, one of every 100 kids born with sickle cell disease dies before the age of five. In sub-Saharan Africa, 50 to 90 of those kids would die from sickle cell disease. This is unacceptable. Simple interventions exist that can save most of these kids. But to treat them, we need a diagnosis. Antibiotics, folate, hydration can all make a difference, but we need to know if there's a disease there first. When I was a Peace Corps volunteer in South Africa, I saw people needlessly suffering because they didn't have access to affordable diagnostics. I decided to try to use my research to create technology to try to reach these people. In the US, every child is screened for sickle cell disease using centralized laboratories filled with expensive equipment and trained personnel. These luxuries don't exist in rural clinics in Africa or even in many hospitals in the developing world. So how do we reach these places? How do we create a different type of technology? We had to rethink how we create devices for diagnostics. We went back to the basics and tried to think about the simplest way to measure a difference between someone with sickle cell disease and someone without it. I told you that there's a difference in the shape of the cells. There's also a difference in density. The sickle cells are much more dense than normal cells. And so if we could separate them, we could maybe identify that they're there. But how do we separate cells by density? If you ever drop something while you're in the bathtub, you know the answer. It either sinks or it floats. The water let you separate the objects by density. When we mix polymers in water, they separate just like oil and water separate and make multiple layers. Each layer allows us to separate objects by density. We designed one of these systems to separate the dense sickle cells from the rest of the blood. And here's everything we need to run our test. We put the polymers into a tube the size of a toothpick, then add a drop of blood, seal the tube, and add it to a centrifuge. We can then spin it for about 10 minutes. During this time, normal shaped cells would pass through the top layer and get stuck at the interface. Only the dense sickle cells can pass through the bottom and make a layer. The result, a rapid test that you can read by eye. By looking for a red band at the bottom of the tube, you can tell if someone has sickle cell disease or doesn't. It takes about 10 minutes and the cost per test is 50 cents. Now, we show that this worked in Harvard. That's great. But that wasn't our original problem. We were trying to create something that would work in rural clinics in Africa. Fortunately, everything I showed you fits in a backpack. So I packed it all up, and I went to Zambia. There we worked with a hospital to test our device on more patients. We also went out to rural clinics. We talked with community health workers and nurses and had them try using our test. It's not enough for a test to be simple in its concept and idea. It has to be simple to use. It has to be so simple that anyone can use it. So working with our partners in Zambia, we found ways to improve our test. And we're now working on the next generation of our rapid test for sickle cell disease. We can do more than just sickle cell disease. Using density, we're creating rapid tests to differentiate different types of anemia and also to do white blood cell counts. These are the kind of tests that aren't just going to be useful in a clinic in rural Africa. They could be helpful here in a clinic in Boston, saving you time and money with the doctors. We still have a way to go before we have a product on the shelf. But in just three years, we've come incredibly far, from an idea 
to clinical trials in Africa. From equipment that fits in the big central laboratory to technology in a backpack. As researchers, we often embrace complexity. Sometimes solutions come from combining our understanding with simplicity. Thank you.